Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful in the studio today working on my beginner series that is making a journal from old books and lots of old books because there's old book pages of uh, many different books in here. So I'm going to be working on this today. If you are just joining me for the very first time, welcome. If you enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up and click on subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. If you'd like a notification when I post something new, click on the little bell and you'll get a notice that I have a new video up. I wanted to say thank you um, to all the people that purchased um, my new paper pack. I have sold half of them. I have six more in the Etsy shop, so I'll put a link down below for those two in case you don't want to collect and tear apart a bunch of old books. And for those of you who miss out on this one, I am working on putting together another one. I've still been collecting more books, and I found this wonderful um, receipt book that's old and has... Um, empty pages and I'm going to actually be doing another little video of of one way that I'm using these and then I've got some music paper going here I've got a bunch of dictionaries to take apart still so I'm going to be working on another paper pack when I have enough variety of books so just in case you miss out um, I do want to mention too um, if you've thought about purchasing something out of my Etsy shop I know shipping's really expensive and it's expensive to uh, ship internationally so I did have one of my international followers ask if I would do a digital kit with the uh, old book pages and I'm going to be doing that I am working on it I wanted to do some that were just the book pages that you can print out of the ones that I can scan and do that and then also some maybe digital collage and I'm working on my skills so I may put some fun stuff in there when I have it ready I will be posting a video and then also to a few really smart people I think with shipping being so expensive in my Etsy shop if you uh, purchase more than forty dollars you get free shipping so a lot of people have been buying the digitals that they haven't purchased yet to have those that they print out at home and then ordering a, a pack of paper so then the end the pack of paper ends up being shipped for free so that's just really smart thing I thought I'd point out if you've been considering it but the shipping kind of throws you off so let's get started on this where I left off I had started my cover um, so I'm going to put that aside today, though I don't know if I'll get to where I'm sewing the signatures in today or not, uh, because I have a little bit more work I need to do on these. In the last video, I kind of showed what I did with my cover to get to that point, and then kind of how I came to deciding uh, how many signatures and how many folios I wanted in each signature. I need to go through them now because I may want to change the order. I think I have something kind of redundant in here. And then a thought that I had before I stitched them in of something I need to pay attention to as far as the order they go in. Also, I want to go back and make sure everything's reinforced where it needs to be before I sew it into my signature in case it's easier to do outside of the book. And then also, if I want to do any stitching on my sewing machine, that's always easier to do beforehand. So I'm kind of that's kind of where I'm at. So I'm just going to grab my first one here and just start going through. I don't always craft on camera. And I actually had somebody make that comment on one of my very first videos. I really was not confident enough to do that because I'm, I'm still kind of new to all this. But I thought I'm going to try to get myself more and more comfortable with actually doing the process on camera. So this first one, um, I'm just going to take my first folio. I had already um, made it stronger, even though this was printed on a fairly heavy uh, paper. I went ahead and did a really thin dictionary page because I had not printed on the back side of it. This is one of the new digitals that I have made that will end up in a kit. So this one's fine as it is. I can add pockets and things later. Unless I wanted to go and stitch around this, and I might with my sewing machine, but I think I will, um, I'll do all that kind of at the end after I've reinforced everything. So that one um, I can set aside here. This one I had coming next in my book. This page is actually a good width for my cover. And that's kind of why I went and got my cover to this point already. Um, just so that I can know what size, the largest size page I want to put in. I like to leave a little bit of border around uh, all sides. You know, it's going to get stitched into my spine probably. Unless with this one I may... Um, I had thought I'd probably stitch just directly to the spine, or I could do another piece in here and have it be kind of a floating spine and then cover this still. So I had that option. So I kind of wanted to measure my pages from the actual size of my cover. 
leaving a border all the way around. That way, if I want to add tabs or little lace to the edge of something, I have a little room to add and it will still kind of be within my cover. So I'm probably not gonna work on this for a while, but I needed to kind of decide what book it was gonna go in. So I have this first one. It's already strong enough, so I'm gonna set it aside. And then this was gonna go next, and you can see it hangs out too far on this edge. So one of the things I need to do is either tear that off, um, fold it over or something, but either way, it needs to be reinforced because that's pretty thin. So I think one idea that I had was to maybe put a pocket kind of like this is thicker here on this edge, and that would reinforce it. But I could even just be quicker about it and maybe just fold this over and put some glue down and then that would also reinforce that edge if I got it folded kind of straight. And then that way, if I want to sew something decorative to the edge, I can. So I'm going to grab just some gluey paper. And I've kind of run out of my glue stick that I was using the other day. I need to order more. I've tried several different glue sticks. Um, the one I had uh, the other day was a Scotch brand. I did think I liked it at first. Um, this one, I, li I like the ones that are purple because then you can see what you're doing. You can see where the glue is. Um, but I ran out of that one, so I need to order more. And I, and I ended up liking the Scotch one okay. So this is Scholastic brand. I think I don't like it. Um, it's cheap, but I don't like it because it's clear and then I can't really see exactly where I've put the glue. So not my favorite, but I'm trying to use up all the stuff that I have here. Um, the other one that I have is and that I might use is this one's purple. It's the Elmer's washable school glue. I don't know if that's very good either. And I, I've used this before, I think. Um, I prefer the bigger ones, and this one's kind of small. So I guess to get in little spots, but um, I'm just gonna try to use up some of my things. So now that made this um, thicker on the edge, so I feel like it's a little more durable, and then I can do something on that page. This one also was hanging out a little far. Um, I like that it's writable on this side, um, but you know, I can actually even maybe put some more paper in there and use this to, instead of putting a pocket or anything on this, maybe I fold this over and maybe it doesn't need to be folded over as much, but maybe it captures like a little notepad of some kind. So I need to go maybe at least this much. So I'm gonna fold maybe to this page. That's kind of a good line. So I'm gonna kind of just fold it there. And I kind of, you know, this is just how I'm gonna go about it. I, I don't really know what's gonna happen on each one. And I kind of like, I kind of like that. I kind of like um, feeling like, okay, what am I gonna do today sort of thing, you know, and then adding to. So I can put maybe some different pieces of paper in here, like actually, that would be cute to grab that in there. I didn't get that folded very straight, so let me try again. Maybe if I actually draw a line with a clear ruler or something. Now, maybe you're not a perfectionist. I try not to be, but I think sometimes I am. And this, you know, these, this book page could be old and not perfect. So I could use a scoreboard probably would be smart, but I'm gonna see if I could fold it on that line, and then I'll fold it back on itself. So I'm gonna try to get that straight. There, that would fit in nicely like that. So I think, and that can just, then I'd have more pages in there. So that would be nice to sew with my sewing machine too. So I'm thinking I might do that. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of glue on that just so it stays so I don't forget. And then I'll go back and I'll go back and sew it. Let's try this purple one. Okay, so that did two things. It strengthened that edge and it gave me some more writing paper. So I have writing space here. I can add a pocket or something there. 
Now I have that writing space here. I can add, you know, something on top if I want or a tuck or nothing. Just decorate this would be pretty. And then this I have kind of free reign. This is thicker already, so I'm not going to worry too much about that one. I'll deal with that if I need to later, depending on what I do. So now I have those, so that's really one, and this would just be two folios. And I've taken the other ones out, and I'll show you why. This was what I had in here before. I had a small one, and then I had this, and I think I had another small one, and now I've taken my hands off of it. I think it was this, maybe. So I do have some of these still hanging out. That's probably still okay with my book, but I don't know that I like it and it's crooked for some reason. Oh, there it is. So I might not want that sticking out. I'm just gonna go back and check it. It's not bad, but I kind of really want to stay within this line. So I think I'll shorten that. The other thing is, I'm not sure about the order of these. After I got to thinking about it, when I sew in each signature, I'm gonna do a pamphlet stitch, and I'll show that later. I like to do mine with five holes. Um, you can do it with three or even just two, but I think all the pages stay in a little snugger and fitted if you have five holes. And then also, if you have shorter pieces, it might capture those. If you have really short pieces, it won't. And you might hit, you know, when you make your your holes, you might end up with, you know, just on the edge and then this is loose. So I don't think it's a good idea to have a short, too short of a piece on your center of your signature um, in case you don't capture all those holes. This one's probably okay, depending on where, because usually I'm going to probably go a half inch or an inch in from the top, probably a half inch. So it might just hit. The safer thing to do would be alternate them so that you have a taller one in the middle of your signature. And then that way you make sure you get all your holes. And if you have shorter ones inside, those are gonna be held in by this larger one on the outside. So best rule of thumb, I think, is to do a larger one on the outside and a larger one on the center. And then you can stagger your heights of your pages in between this. Okay, so let's see what I have here. That one's good. This one also could be good on the inside. It's nice and sturdy if I wanted that to be the center of my signature. Um, let's see there. That's still kind of cute there. But I end up with a lot of writing paper right at the thing, so maybe I want to move that one. Maybe I like this one here. That's kind of nice. Separate those two pockets. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five. So that works. Okay, so let me just go back and make sure I trim and have uh, sturdy page edges. So this one, I think I need to trim. And I haven't, I have glued my pocket. Oops, so I've already glued my pocket. And I don't know, is that within my, that one's okay. That one's within my pages, so I'll leave that. I knew there was one hanging over here though. Well, what happened? I thought I had one hanging over too far. Maybe it was because of the order that I had the minute stuck out. So that looks like that's gonna work. I think it was that one, but I think switching where it is. So you can see, um, once I sew that in, all my edges are good. And it's okay if they stagger, like I could make this one shorter. I don't mind them looking, you know, tattery and uneven like they do once you open this. I just don't want them sticking out beyond my book. So that's one I think is good to go for now, besides sewing on it. And then this was my second one. Again, this was a digital that I printed out from my scans. This will probably be one that's in the uh, digital kit that I'm gonna list. So that's a good size to start off with. I had uh, tea dyed it with some doilies that didn't come out very well on the back side. 
So I think I'm going to leave that and not cover it. This was another digital, so it's on thick enough paper again. This was from my wallpaper, vintage wallpaper pack. And that one's cut a little bit smaller, which is fine. I liked these two together. And then this is going to open this way, but this is sturdy enough again. This was the digital from Roxy Creations French Ch Chateau. And I like that one here. So this one I had taken some signatures out because I think I had some smaller pieces inside. And I wanted to, maybe it was from this one, I wanted to use some music paper that I don't think I put in previously. And I think this is also another piece I had not put in that I just grabbed. I've been cleaning out the last few days. I was cleaning out some of my vintage pages that I keep in a bin, just maybe one-off pages that I got from somebody else. And that's what this was. So I thought I might include it in this one. Maybe I like it. No, I like that there. Maybe I want to break up these two and put that there. I think I want it this way. And then I had, so that's one, two, three, four. Oh, then I would just need one more. This was my problem when I think this was maybe too small. It wasn't going to catch all my five holes. So I think I'm going to take this one out and put it somewhere else. And maybe I can put this one in between here. would look okay. One, two, three, four, five. So that works for this one. And see, I'm going to be capturing this in between. Maybe I want it down here. I really liked these two together, though. So I'm thinking maybe here. It's just not as exciting. Maybe a music page. I have this music sheet that this was already, it was a double folio that was a larger piece and I had cut off already and used it for something else. So I just folded this up to get a good length. This I'm going to make be a flap over here, I think. That way I'll have a tuck built in there. And then I can maybe make another, either trim it or make another pocket over here. Well, I'm going to have a pocket here, so I think I'll just trim this or fold it back the other way. And I think I'll just trim it. Okay, so I need to make a mark. And maybe I'll just tear it. Okay, I like that. So I think this is just going to be a pocket. And that's pretty thick already. I don't know that I even need to bulk that up. So let's take that out. But I might like to stitch it. And I'm just using my art glitter glue for this. And I can do just the sides. Or I kind of like to do... The bottom edge too just because it's going to help that be sturdier actually i need to trim a little bit off of this it's kind of bumping into my edge so get rid of a sliver of that and then i have this little pocket this might need to be reinforced a little bit here it's just because it's old paper it kind of broke a little bit but I think if I put a little glue here when I do that, that'll be fine. And again, that's thick enough I don't really need. This was a pretty heavy duty. Sometimes music books, old music books, the papers are really nice, heavier weight. Because you figure if you're put, I play the piano and it, you're, you know, you're, you're flipping through those books all the time. They need a lot. They need to be good paper for wear and tear. So they're usually a nice, um, a nice thickness that's one reason I like music paper but I also like it because I have been playing piano since I was a child and so it's just another familiar thing for me okay so that I basically added a pocket but I don't have another page on here so I could even this kind of became one folio in a way a three pager so I could realistically add something else in between for fun 
So I might do that. I might take one of these short ones that I had put in just because they're cute. But I don't know. This one's pretty thin. I think not. I think I'm going to end up adding enough stuff. I could add a little booklet in there or something. So one, two, three, four. Are we calling this five? I don't know. I'll probably put something else in between here. So this is good for right now. And all those are sturdy enough, and they're all within my line. So we'll move on. And then this one, let's see. This one's thicker, so that's good because that one is a little bit thinner. So this one, again, is one of my scans um, that will end up in a kit. Just some. I want some that are just kind of blank bake book page for you to use however you want. This is does not seem cut straight at all which could throw me off to my eye. It looks very crooked. I'm gonna go see if I can straighten it out. Okay, that's better. But this this page is gonna be narrower than I need it to be um, for my size. Let's see what these were. So I can actually go by this book page for my limit to my width. So this is actually a little narrow, but that's okay. I like it on the outside and it will get caught with my five holes. And then this one, this one I've already reinforced. This is one that I, I put two of actually the same book together. That way it will hold pockets and things like that. This one was my one I grabbed out of my bin that was already had some things attached to it. So this is nice and sturdy on this side. Um, in this, I had done this little flip thing with a tuck here, a pocket here. It's a little... Um, delicate here but i put a piece of my aged uh tape there and then i added a piece of washi and so this one's you know even though it's thin paper um it's sturdy around the edges where it needs to be so i think by the time i if i uh, glue anything onto this for decoration it'll make it even more sturdy so i think that one's good this one is fine and then again, this is too small for the center, so I need something bigger. I have one, two, three, four, five. So I need to put this one. This one may be even too small too. So maybe I have, maybe I just totally change and put this in a different one. Because I kind of like, let's see. Oh, that's kind of nice seeing that edge there. This one here. Then maybe I put... This one here, I like that they're going different directions. And then this little one, I like this better. It, it gives me my variation in sizes, directions, and we'll keep everything together because I put the largest one in the middle. Now I'll want to put pockets and things on this because that's kind of boring. So that'll happen later too. Okay, so I think that's good. Let me see if my, my width stayed Pretty good, I think good enough. If I have to trim a little bit off of this center one, maybe I'll trim a tiny bit just because it is pretty big and maybe trim that a little bit. Okay, I trimmed that down just a little bit so that it, it um, is gonna fit a little better within my book and still capture all the five holes. So I'm happy with that. Okay, we're on a roll now. And then this one, again, I want to take one of my ones that I know the width. I have a little bit hanging out here, but not too bad. Let me double check with my book. Yeah, I do need to trim that just a little bit. So when we get in there, we'll see what I have here. So this one, again, this is one of my digitals, or no, not one of mine. This is um, Roxy Creations from the French Chateau, and this is printed on heavier paper. And then again, this was another digital that I like keeping. These are, you know, I'm looking at these that like backgrounds. And then I had, this is the one I need to trim. Maybe I put this in between these two plain ones. 
So because I trimmed that, now it's like this. I need to glue this back. This is actually pretty thin. I think I want to reinforce that anyway. So let's see, I need some old book page. Okay, and then I need to close that edge. So much easier um, if I think something's gonna be thin, like I had done on this one, I don't know why I didn't do it on this one, is reinforce them before you glue anything down because it's just much easier. So, but we got it. And then I think I'll end up sewing on this one too. You don't have to sew on any of your pages. Um, you can even just do stitch lines with the pen if you like the look um, and not actually sew it. Uh, the other thing you could do is just make little holes and hand stitch. Um, you know, I like to do slow stitching, so even doing cute stitches and blanket stitch and that sort of thing around the edges would be cute if you like that. That takes more time, obviously, but um, it's just one of those little details that's kind of fun. So I have this one, and then this is kind of breaking up some of the plain paper things that I have on here, getting those uh, pages separate. The other thing I could have done is just fold it this way, um, you know, here, and then I would have had been breaking them up too. So maybe I'll do that. And this one. And then this, I can, I've can. i already reinforced this so I can glue this here um, on this edge. These could be a little thicker, you know, on this edge. This edge is fine because it's a pocket over here. This edge could be, I could add some washi tape or something there just to give it that little um, extra. I think I'll wait until I decorate this just that way I can make a, a washi tape I like. And then what else here? Unless I'm gonna stitch around the whole edge of this, which I might, which means I'd want the washi tape on there already, I think. So let's see if I have one, where's my box? And you could put a piece of paper or whatever you want on this, but I'm just gonna do this. Okay, so that's a little thicker. That way if I want the stitching, I'll be on top of that. And then, so that's three. Three we have. What else did I have? Oh, this one. Oh, and I like that together. Four. And the dictionary page. This dictionary page is a little thin. And I don't have a ton of writing space in here. So this might be fun to um, back with that ledger or something. That would be kind of fun um, because this is pretty thin. So let's see. I kind of like this ledger. I haven't used any of this, I don't think, in this book at all. So I think I might cut the whole thing. It's kind of a waste then. If I go, I just like being this direction maybe on this. If I go this and just glue it to this, have it go in my book this way, I kind of like that because then this way, this might be able to be cards or I can fold it up and make a pocket. So I think I'll do that. This will make this nice and thick. Okay, so I'm gonna take this or this one and just start along one edge. so that I can get it going. Okay, now this is pretty ripply and wonky. So I, I actually have a, an example of something I wanna show you. I'm gonna go iron this and see what happens. But I had something, another video that I was gonna be doing, and I probably still will, if you mention in the comments that you'd like to see it, 
Um, but this kind of comes, uh, brings me the subject of glue sticks. And you may have a favorite that you use for you experienced people out there. This is kind of for beginners, so I kind of want to address this while I'm having this issue. There are lots of different kind of glue sticks. Please put in the comments which is your favorite because I'm, I'm to where I need to order some more good ones. And I probably will order the Scotch brand unless you tell me that there's something even better out there. There are people that I've watched that don't use glue stick ever that they would maybe use uh, like matte gel medium or something like that or decoupage like uh, Mod Podge which I did a thing, I'm gonna show you two examples. Yesterday I did some master boards and that was the other video that I was thinking I might do here soon, just because it, I got sidetracked for a reason. I'll show you real quick. Well, my iron's heating up because I wanna iron this and see how it turns out. Yesterday I did some master boards um, because I was looking for some music sheet to put in this book. And when I did, I realized I had several books I hadn't even taken apart yet. So I took them apart. I also had that ledger, the large ledger, and a couple of the sheets of the ledger were not in great shape. It's it's not, too, I wouldn't call it brittle, but it's old. So, and it's kind of thin. The reason that I bought the book and I love it, it's a, a whole ledger book of blank ledger pages is because I like to have uh, lined something, whether it's ledger or lined paper or graph paper or something on the back of my uh, cards, tags and cards just so they're they're writable but they have some design on them this paper was perfect for that for backing for that because it's a little thin it needs to be made thicker anyway and so, so just to glue it onto the backs of cards is perfect so i thought well i'm just going to use some of the scraps that i had some of my music sheets were too brittle to put into paper packs they need to be used for decoupage and i had some music scrap already so i just made a master board and this one which you can see is pretty flat, was done with glue stick. And this was done with the Scotch brand glue stick. Any kind of thing that you do like that is gonna be a little wonky because you wetted the paper. Uh, and sometimes you might get a little bubble here that you didn't get out. That's why I like the purple one because you can kind of see how much glue you're getting on to your, your paper. The other thing is I ironed this, which kind of heated it up and kind of evened everything out. And then I put it under a real heavy atlas that I have that's this big so it could flatten it out. But you can see this one's pretty nice and flat. Then I did some um, with Mod Podge just to see the difference. And again, you can see um, you can see little shiny spots where maybe the glue, a little too much glue and it got on the top. I didn't go back and seal this whole thing with Mod Podge because I don't really want that. I mean, I used the mat and even it had that little bit of a sheen. Um, but it's faster as far as, you know, it's messier maybe in some ways. You're, you're putting it on with a brush and then, you know, squeegeeing it around and, and all that. Um, but this was some that I did with some coffee stained paper that I baked in the oven and I left it in too long. And it was old paper, so it's, it was crispy. So I was never going to be able to use it for anything other than decoupage. So I didn't waste it. These were all my burnt pages that were kind of beyond using as pages. But again, I wanted to show these because both of these I did with Mod Podge. And then I ironed them and put them under the books. And they're still kind of wonky. So I'm going to try to do that again. You know, this is just a single layer anyway, a background. More stuff will happen on this, which will make it even thicker. Um, the Mod Podge versus the glue stick made this kind of maybe feel a little thicker. But again, these are all backgrounds. They're going to get cut up into cards anyway. Um, but it just shows you the difference between using Mod Podge and glue stick. I think if you can get the glue stick ironed out flat, in my experience, and I'm going to go do this one real quick, is you can kind of melt that all out again and get it nice and flat and then it's a little bit more uniform. But again, I'm using, this paper was uh, coffee stained paper, so it, it kind of shrinks up and you, you iron it to get the wrinkles out, but sometimes you still have those. So if you don't mind a grungy vintage look, this is okay, but if you're looking for something very perfect, you know, you, you just have to, for one, take more time. But let me go iron this and see what happens. Okay, now I'm sharing my experience. Other people might contradict me, but um, this is what I have found. So you can see 
I got, I melt, I ironed this and I did it on a high setting um, with my just regular steam iron. And it got more of those bubbles out because in my, in my mind, what's happening is that glue that was maybe clumpy here or there, there were voids, it kind of melted all that again. And then going back and forth, it kind of spreads it out to me. That's what I'm thinking is happening. And then it, it's all stuck down. Now, I'm not gonna say that there's not maybe a little bubble in there here or there, but that's just much better than it was. Um, and even compared to this, I'm gonna go iron this again while I have the iron out, just to see now that this is really dry overnight, if I can get that any flatter. Okay, again, see, I don't think it does the same thing. It's, I, I don't know how to describe this so much. It, this is still, uh, for one thing, it's different papers on top, so it is going to be lumpier as far as layers on another layer on another layer kind of thing. But it's still, it's not as, it, it's not as flat as how the glue stick one comes out. So I don't know. I know there's people, in fact, I think, I just started watching Treasured Books. I don't remember her name, but because um, I, I just started watching her, so my apologies. But I think she was the one that said she never uses glue stick. And she uses a glue, um, because she was kind of talking about those in a video I watched, why she likes a certain glue. It, ha it doesn't make your page wrinkle, like if you're working with magazine paper and things like that that are thin. And you just, you know, paint it on and squeegee, um, put your paper on and it's just like flat and no wrinkly. I love that, but then the glue that she put, she's in, um, in Europe. I think, or Australia, Australia, I think. And it wasn't a glue um, that I could find here. So, you know, I don't know. It's, it's a very clear glue, so it could be something like Fabri-Tac or because this is a clear glue. I tried to find something like it. So I don't know. If you know of a glue, um, if you watch her and know of something here in the United States that's a comparable, I would be happy to try that too. But this works to me to put two pieces of paper like that together. Um, and they're really nice and flat. Now, and I'm not gonna say I don't ever have an edge pill up. This one's pretty good actually. But if I did like that, then I just go and take my little glue where I need to and, and put it in there. And, and once I've you know, cut it up into cards or whatever and fix that. So I think this is what I'm gonna end up doing here for this middle page, just cause I like the variety of it. And I think I'll go this way. Um, and I could, I could just fold it like not half, exactly in half. Maybe I have one side, a pocket, like maybe I fold it here, which might not be exactly half. Or maybe I look at this side and fold it, you know, at a third so that it's a pocket of some kind. And then I'm still within my page. I think I might do that just because I like things to kind of be uneven sometimes. Now that's nice and sturdy. So it can be added, I can add a pocket or something to it or add flips or any kind of thing and it's gonna hold up. And I actually kind of like leaving that tattered edge. So I think that's gonna be my center. And then this way I could do either a pocket that direction or this way. I think I like this way. Okay, so I'm gonna find my height here. And this is on the outside, so I don't really need to cut that. I can just, I think that'll be okay to leave it like that. Okay, another one. Another one down. My last one. So this is on thinner paper, but it's not horrible. So I think I'm gonna leave it for now. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. It's just a map. I could print on this side. You know what, I'm gonna leave it because I think one thing I haven't done yet that I will uh, maybe do in another video is using envelopes to add pockets and things and then I can, I can have some flips. So I think I'll leave that. Then I have, this one has a, a pocket. That's pretty thin, that's pretty thin in a pocket. Um, these will need something, but I don't know what, and I think if I do flips, they can hinge on, and I think that'll be okay. So I think I'm gonna leave that for now. This one is really thin paper. 
if it needs to have something. But again, I think maybe I can add envelopes or something um, to that later. Or maybe I find stuff and do it now. I don't know. Let's see what I had. Because that's pretty thin. That could have... I like that it's blank for writing. If I cover it up, I've lost a page for writing. So I'm better off to do some kind of flips that reinforce that edge that's another piece of paper. So maybe I should find that and do that. So another something, something. Okay, this could work for this side. And that's probably thick enough to be a little pocket. So I need to trim the top. Maybe I'll trim the top and the bottom. And that way I don't have to round the corners close. And then I can trim that. So let's see. So I have one, two, three, and I had these two. So I need this one to be inside. It's pretty thin too. I ended up with all the thin ones at the end here for some reason. I want my smaller one inside and a larger one outside. This one has a lot of writing space in it compared to some of the other ones, I think. Maybe I need to swap out something. Let's see, again. Oh, I know what it was. I did this page. It's music paper that I was going to maybe use instead of something else. Again, it has a lot of writing space too, though. Let's see. It's just some of them look busier, you know, than others. I want to have, like, this one's pretty busy. Maybe I swap. Oh, that's writing, too. Maybe not. I kind of like that one. Yep. Well, that has music. Three. I think that's better. I like this better. That one is just a little thin for how thin everything else is in this one. So I think I think I'm happy with that. Okay. So that those are my signatures ready for stitching. I think because I think that is um, good as far as having things reinforced for right now. And they already feel, just doing that little bit more than I did, they already feel a little thicker than they were before. So I'm going to go do some stitching on these before I sew them into this. And then uh, we'll move forward in the next video. So I hope that was helpful, actually seeing my thought process and me actually taking the time 
to do it. Talk a little bit about glue sticks. Oh, one more thing about glue sticks, if you've watched this far, where I was talking about them pulling apart, you know, uh, after they've dried and you've ironed them and whatnot, getting pages to pull apart. These aren't as bad as like, if you had any kind of shiny paper, uh, like magazine paper or um, encyclopedia paper sometimes can be that shiny paper. It's kind of the same as if you've watched me do any of my covers um, with uh, like cereal boxes, something like this. They're shinier. And so when you use a glue stick and then iron it and all of that, it is just going to peel up unless you prep this. So to prep it, you would sand it. So your paper um, it might be too thin to be doing that. So I'm not going to recommend doing this glue stick and getting the bubbles out with the iron and all that on any kind of shiny paper. I think then you want to use a Mod Podge or some other, you know, if there's a clear non-wrinkly glue to use for that kind of purpose. That's kind of why I don't say, no, I never use glue stick or oh, I only use this kind of glue. There's different things for different purposes. Just like when I went and did these, I used glue stick on this one because this paper was all pretty durable that I was using. Some of it was brittle, but it was not breaking too bad to use glue stick. You know, that can be a little harder to work. Softer glue sticks, like I think the Scotch brand and this clear one even maybe were a little softer to put on than, than some are a little harder. Those work okay, but like this paper was so brittle and falling apart that I couldn't have used a glue stick. I needed to use brush some glue that I could brush on. So, you know, everything is going to have a different use, you know. You, you have to use what product's going to work. So that's my kind of beginner lesson for getting my signature sturdy. I'm going to go, like I said, go sew, and then I will come back in the next video. So have a great rest of your day. Now go make something. Bye.